coming up. Ivo, here's what's happening right now. I'm telling you the numbers. Sam and I are yeah. telling you the numbers. And we're seeing a sinking Titanic. And you're saying, but wait, two thirds of the ship has not sunk yet. You know what I love about numbers? It doesn't numbers lie. doesn't lie. Money is green and numbers do not lie. Welcome to the closing table where everyday real estate investors bring their deals to the top experts to get exposure for potential partners and investors. These top deal closer experts will ask questions, break the deals down, and cross-examine the guest to determine whether the deal is profitable or to be shot down. Winners will be inducted into the Closing Table Hall of Fame where they will continue to receive exposure from the show. Who are the Closing Table experts? Meet the Kwok brothers, who started out as college students having over 75 rental units in just one year and are now partners of a private equity firm investing in large-scale apartment complexes. And now, here's your hosts, the Kwok brothers. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Closing Table. Today we have Ivo from San Antonio, Texas, who wants to invest in a single family house for the purpose of turning into an Airbnb. Now, he already has another Airbnb and he's about to close very soon. And he wants to ask us whether this deal is profitable or it's a complete nightmare. Hey Ivo, Daniel here. What do you got for us today? Hello, Daniel. Well, I have a, a property I'm, I'm, per, I'm closing on next week in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Um, it's it's an off-market property um, for one hundred and thirty thousand three three one. Okay, and this um, what did you say this was? Is a single-family house? It's a single-family house with renters already in place. Okay. Um, the the contract right now is till August, but they have expressed interest in in uh, shortening it. And my goal is to turn it into a short-term rental. Um, um, as soon as they get, go out. So when we do the analysis, I guess uh, it depends on what kind of analysis we do, whether we do it as a, you know, long term. <laughs> I always do the long term, uh, you know, as, as plan B, just in case. Yeah. So how much are you buying this for? I know you said it, but let's let's go over the numbers yeah. once again. It's one hundred and thirty thousand. OK. Now, do you have any experience already with short term rentals or is this your first time? I've been doing short term rentals uh, since about. Uh, uh, 2014. Oh wow! Um, on and off. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I've done house hacking. I technically did one flip because mm -hmm. I did a homeowner's finance, and then mm -hmm. I got the house back and sold it twice. But then they I had they gutted my whole upstairs and. Yeah. So you already have experience <laughs> with real estate then? Very little, really, honestly, because I only own one property, and this is going to be my second. I, I okay. do some rental arbitrage, but I got rid of three rental arbitrage units this year. Why, why um, is that? Just because of 2020? Well, because they weren't performing it like I would like them to. And uh, and it's a C-class complex. And um, it's just uh, I, w I was expecting for it to, you know, they revitalize and, and you know, do all the um, the rehabbing on the outside. They make it look nicer and so forth. And uh, it's just tough when um, when about I had a uh, total. I had four units there and I mm -hmm. only have one. But when when uh, Airbnb or, you know, or, or VRBO guests every um, every month that have one or two, they were scared for whatever reason. You know, people are coming from different parts of the country with different backgrounds and experiences. And um, and so, you know, just to have to deal with uh, people's preconceived yeah. notions or, you know. So last last question before we really kind of get into it. What's the projected income for, you know, is this your first, I, I'm assuming this is your first one in San Antonio? Yeah. Um, no, they, well, I, this will be my second, but um, okay, projected income in terms of as a long-term rental or when I, when I turn it into a short-term rental? Uh, I guess both. Yeah, give us both. Yeah. Okay. As it is right now, um, the, it's, it's, the, the, the rent is under market. Uh, cause they have a two year mm -hmm. lease and it's a thousand a month. And so it's depending on how we do the assessment, you know, I can tell you, I can go with PI mortgage insurance, escrow and, and go with all that. And if you take into account vacancy repairs and capital expenditures, uh, it depends on how we're going to analyze this. Um, that's what I'm curious about. Um, as a, as a regular long-term rental, it's not a great deal. But the problem is, is that here in San Antonio, um, we have actually a lot of people, a lot of uh, investors coming from uh, California here. And it's just the competition is fierce. You know, there's low inventory all yeah. over the U.S. So here, what's, what's the income here? What are we trying to get okay, at? Total, well, right now, as it is with the tenants in place mm -hmm. till August, or if I can adjust the contract till June, it's 1000 a month. 1000 a month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
So it, it already, it doesn't, you know, you, you, there's that infamous 1% rule, right? Which, I mean, I'm not a big fan of, right? And, and it's hard to find. I mean, for someone new like me, because I'm not doing the burst strategy. For sure. Not, you know, and, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't meet the 1% rule, you know, which again, I'm not a fan of, but I understand a lot of investors go with it. And it sounds like you have experience with the 1% rule. What are your thoughts on not meeting that criteria? Well, it, it depends on the climate we're in. And, and, and given the fact that, I mean, I've, I've done, a, you know, rehab, I'm not, a, I don't know much of, you know, I can't do the work on myself because I'm not inclined like that. But given the climate we're in, uh, where there's low inventory for a new guy, you know, that's getting into this. And given the fact that I don't have constant work for, uh, for workers, therefore, like I've tried the, re I, I um, got into things with the complex owner that I do the, re um, the, arbitrage and I, uh, I agreed to fixing up some of his units, the ones that weren't, weren't uh, operating right now. And uh, I, I, I get a contractor out. I, I, I agree to his price. I don't try to bring him down. Then he calls me, oops, when this other investor uh, that I usually work for has a month and a half worth of work. So I uh, can't do yours. So it's, it's been really tough. So and you're, you're at this point, you're saying you're, you're not desperate, but you've got to find a deal pretty soon. Well, I'd rather have my mark, my money parked in real estate than parked in a bank. I understand that. Yeah. And so I guess that's my bottom line. And I still have more money to be able to buy two or three more of these. This, this type, you know, in this price yeah. range. So are, are, are you buying this thing cash? No, I'm not. I'm going to get a loan on it. I didn't want to buy it cash because, you know, I was trying to find out you have to, you have to, uh, depending on which, what kind of loan, you have to have it for six months before you can refi out or a year. And I would have to, you know, borrow some money. I didn't, I didn't want to do it that way. And I just went ahead and, and did a, a Fannie Mae, Freddie, you know, loan. And yeah. 50% down. So, so what's your projected short-term rental? Because obviously that's your exit strategy. I'm gonna, right. We're going to go back to your backup plan because I don't know how good of a backup yeah, plan that, that, that is. Yeah, that backup plan does yeah, not As a, as a, as a long-term rental, if you don't account for my, my uh, PITI is 861. Okay. A month. Okay. Is that a month? Yes, per month. So if you're just looking at that without taking into consider vacancy, repairs, and capital expenditures, yep. then you say, okay, he's cash flowing 139 bucks. But if you take into account, you know, those other things, I could be in the negative. You will be. Yeah, you negative. will be negative. For sure exactly. you'll be negative. So what's, be what's the projected you know, short-term rental income then? That's what I want to know because that's what you're going for, right? Yeah. Short-term rental, I like to be conservative uh, on it, but just judging by looking on Airbnb and doing kind of a market analysis on property, you know, on houses kind of similar. Some of them are, it was hard to find a three, one, but you know, three twos. Um, I would say, I would say just being conservative, I don't think I have any problem making 2000 a month. Now I could be making also three a month because I have a three, two that I, in another area of town and I, and, it, and it's about, uh, it averages out about 26. So what's your net on that 2K a month? Because I know with Airbnb, you have, you know, you got to hire, you got to do cleaning, you got to do. Yeah, 2K a month, then it, it will minus P, uh, PITI, then uh, then you're looking at uh, 1,139, yeah. but then minus, you know, expenditures. And I already see that I have to do some, when the tenants move out, I got to repaint. I probably get, I got to do something with the cabinets, make it look nice, get some better appliances. So there's going to be some money I'm going to have to put into this before I put, I put, you know, obviously um, I have a, a lot of the, quite a bit of the furniture since I, 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 I yeah. Uh, I have a, what's, what's the, what's the operational expenses of you right. running a short-term income or short, short-term rental? Okay. Well, uh, other than PITI, when I, uh, it depends on the cleaning, how many times a year and the way my pricing strategy is on short-term rentals, I'm getting a lot of month, monthly rentals. So technically the, the cleaning would be like 75 to $85 by a cleaning crew. Um, is that a month? Cleaning. Yeah. So if I, the way I run my pricing strategy is to, uh, um, promote people to, uh, to book, uh, 30 days. So I don't have to pay the city and state, uh, uh hotel taxes. Got it. Okay. You know, so I can pass that on. And, and and are you, is that a, is that a requirement that you're making prior to every guest booking or can they actually book a couple of days if they want to? No, they can book a couple of days. Uh, they can, they can do that. However, it's going to be substantially more and not as attractive, which I, you know, and if I have some orphan days on my calendar, I'll maybe bring the price down to get those booked, but I've been doing pretty good. Um, I guess, uh, 
since April in, in, yeah. in, in getting monthly stays or longer. But, 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 but what did that mean that you have to pay more in cleaning fees? Cause you have, you have more people, yes, more yes. cleaning so, companies so more, going in. Yeah. I would have to pay more cleaning fees, but the guest right. pays that within the, the booking. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, so I mean, it's, yeah. so here's, here's where I'm at. So I mean, you're, it seems Oh, wait a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. So as a short term rental PITI plus let's say electric internet and the water. Yeah. Let's say that's 150. Let's say two, let's say 200. Is, are you, are you positive on those numbers? Yeah, because I'm from the house I have, that's a little bit bigger than this one. This is a thousand square foot home. Uh, electric, uh, can be anywhere between, uh, 125 to 200 uh but yeah 200 would have to be like yeah uh, in, so in a really hot it month. seems uh, it seems you're going to be cash flowing it seems you're going to yeah, be cash flowing 939 dollars a month from the short term rental yeah and that's being conservative with two thousand i'm just that's, saying and that's being conservative well, did you also add that. add ongoing maintenance to to the to that list daniel yes 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 well, that's what, the, yeah, there'll be, but there's some things that I have to do before I turn it into short term. Right. Rental. So you're going to, right, so, so how, how much, to, how much are you spending there? Before I turn it into short term rental? Yeah. So like, what's the, what's well, all the deferred maintenance, the painting? Got you. Got you. Well, it depends on if uh, I'm going to have to, I look, I did a walkthrough, so I saw, but it seems like I won't have to paint the whole house, but I'll, I'll have to make that dis the determination when I, when I uh, get the property back. Yeah. What's the it. total number? What's the, I mean, painting, yeah, every, give, everything. Give the bottom line, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it depends if I do the painting myself. Let's say um, three fifty painting. Um, the water heater needs um, needs um, the new um, new um, hoses. That's about uh, forty bucks. The air conditioning checked out fine. So, so you're you're telling me is you haven't run the numbers before yet for for no, what you're going to need. The, on the, I'm going to guess. I'm I'm putting aside. That's why they no. Don't guess. Oh, you we don't, don't want we don't want you to guess, Ivo. All right. So okay. I, I'd rather have you not tell me anything than you having to try to guess. Okay. Got and, you. and you're closing. Um, you said you're closing next week. Yes. Uh, so, man, how did, I, I don't so know. So how man. did you not run these numbers yet if you're closing next week? I'm, I'm, uh, for me, even if I pay up to 6,000, let's say, let's just take a number 6,000, because it depends on here. There's two economies in terms of uh, what you're going to pay for something. Um, so if I, if I, if I pay, let's say 350 and I do the painting myself, I need some, some appliances. I can get them on Craigslist. I can get a stove for 150. That looks good. So, uh, so I've, I'm hearing a lot of things that's going to cause even more problems in the future. So, I mean, first off, I like your level of experience. I think you have a level of experience that, you know, not a lot of people who come to the closing table have. Having said that, uh, I will say that it, it, for me, I worry that you're literally set. When do you close next week? They don't, I don't have a closing date yet because the, they still, the um, appraisals haven't sent the report yet. You got it. So you're closing relatively soon. All right, you're closing relatively soon and, and you're very wishy-washy on your yeah. numbers. There's nothing figured out yet. I mean, I'm worried. Does that does this not worry you or Well, the reason my 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 other one cat, you know, for me, the only I've had it for a year and a half. I, you know, you never know what you got to repair or not, but you when you get in there, you repair what you think you you got to repair and then you'll see. But as long as, you know, I've gotten things inspected by air conditioning people, you know, other things. So you kind of get an idea, right? But you but get those. You get those. One, I only spent four hundred in yeah. a year and a half. But you get those inspections. Yeah. But you get those inspections based to, to verify what those numbers are. But it, my problem that I have with you is you haven't br you haven't brought those numbers together. You know what I mean? So I mean, yeah, you can you can do your inspection I, all you I want. I would have done. I would have done that numbers long before I put this on your contract. But but I I mean, every deal is different. You know, come on, you got you got enough experience to know that. You know, you've been at this thing since two thousand fourteen. You know, you've been at this for six years. Every deal is different. You know, yeah. I mean, I have I have one apartment that does super well. Everyone pays on time, and I have another apartment I go into, and I think it's going to do good because the other one did great. You know, it's in the same area. There's a lot of similarities. Yeah. Well, guess what? There's a lot of things that come up. I mean, every, every deal is different. So, I mean, yeah. what, Iva, what do you, what are your thoughts, man? What do you, what do you think your action steps need to be moving forward? Because you're already closing on this thing a week. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think you have enough. You know, I don't, I don't know if it might be too late for you to back out. You know, I mean, do you, do you already have well, earnest money on this with thing? Losing, with losing a substantial amount. Yeah, you're you're right about that. But I, I'm I mean, like I said, I'm not an experienced, you know, investor. 
And what I've seen, like, if I can take, you know, like I said, I've only bought one house and did put, turned it into a short-term rental. This is going to be my second one before I just, just rental arbitrage and, and house hacking. And with the house that I have, it's obviously, it's another neighborhood, but I did look at Airbnb to see. Um, <laughs> the thing is, I'm, I'm cash flowing, uh, you know, pretty good. I mean, I'm cat at least as long as I cash, my, my goal is to cash flow at least a thousand on a property. Yeah. I have a, you're, you're making a mistake that a lot of rookie investors make is that they only look at the cash flow. They'll look at the deal and they'll say, Hey guys, but look at, but Daniel, look at the cash flow. And for me, yeah. you know, my, my mentor told me something very, very important. And you know what? I learned this lesson from him, but I also learned it the hard way. And I also learned it the right way. In real estate, you always protect your downside and your upside will always take care of itself. Right now, what I see you trying to do is you're trying to overreach. You're looking, you're saying, look at the cash flow. And my fear right now, right? And, and I'm saying this because, you know, I, it, you sound like a great guy. You know, you sound like a nice guy. You want to get going. You're wanting to build a portfolio for yourself. And I root for you and I'm on your side. And so, so having said that, the reason why I say it is it just seems that you haven't done a lot of prep work in trying to protect your downside, your downside risk, your backup. There is no backup plan here. Your backup plan is well, guaranteed losing money. Uh, well, the backup plan, if, I mean, if I had to do it, if they shut down the economy, it would have to be a making a long term rental. And, and at which point, since it's undervalued, it's it should be between I've gotten different uh, sources between 11 to 1200 a month for a long term rental. And because I put 15 percent down. And, you know, that, that freed up 6,000. So for me, if I spend 6,000, I know what I can get for the appliances. I know if I painted myself, what the paint costs I've done painting before. Um, yeah. But for all the money else, you're, you're putting in, you're talking about a very, very yeah. small return. Even if you got 1200 a month, you're looking at a very small return with everything yeah, that you I put understand. in. But that's my plan B. I mean, if they, that's only if they shut down the economy and that, you know, or, or some, they change some short-term rental laws, but I don't think that, I'll have to go to plan B, but I, that's how I check my plan B. But the way I, I've been bidding, up, like, like I said, I have no the realtor gave me this deal, which isn't a great deal. He's making money on both ends, but I've been working with him since the 07 buying or selling. Um, is, is the realtor your friend? Property. I wouldn't consider him my friend, but he's, he's bought my, myself and my father introduced me. Yeah. So I know, I know I said this about realtors already on the show and I love my realtor buddies. I'll help them all day long. But let me be the first to tell you, and this is tough love for my realtor and broker friends. 90% of realtors and brokers, zero idea what they're doing in real estate investing. Zero. In my opinion, they're a glorified salesperson and the product happens to be a piece of real estate. And again, I would say this in front of all the realtors in the United States of America. 90% of realtors do not know what they're doing when it comes to investing in real estate, let alone short-term rentals. So... I understand this realtor friend brought you the deal, but again, I, I go back. Your job as the investor is to protect the downside and you're using your own money, which is worse, you know, or, I mean, I, it, it's bad enough. You know what I mean? I mean, you've got a lot to lose. Yeah. You know, I mean, what I, I, what I liked about my situation, no money, no credit. I mean, a lot of people would see that as a negative, but I actually saw it as a positive because it means I have nothing to lose. If I screw up, if everything goes down to crapper, well, guess what? I'm back to square one, which is where I was. But you, my friend, you've got a lot to lose. And it worries me that the downside risk is not protected. The backup plan is not a good backup plan, right? And this is what I see, again, with a lot of investors who, you know, they spend a lot of time in these forums. They watch the videos, the podcast. And the only thing that they think they need to do is calculate the cash flow. I don't know, Sammy. Well, what, what, I'm, what I'm seeing here is only a 4.8% cash on cash return. And and here's here's how I came up with that assumption, right? And and at the end of the day, Ivo, we want to help you out. We we want to we want to get you to a place where you're not losing money. Um, but the the way that I got to that place was, you know, you told me 15 percent down, so that's nineteen thousand five hundred dollars cash. I would I would imagine that there's going to be some surprise expenses. I'm just factoring five thousand dollars in there, and that's just to cover any surprises that may come. Surprises are everywhere in real estate; they will be there. That's you know, it's your best friend, your worst enemy. So I've factored in $24,500 cash outlay, and that's assuming that you can get the rent up to $1,200, because right now it's $1,000. So already you're going to be losing money from the get-go till, you know, at least ends in August. So for seven months, you're going to be losing money. But even then, when you, if, you, if you bring up the rent, if you turn this around and bring this rent up, I'm only seeing about 100 bucks of cash flow a month. I'm being generous there too. And factoring, I'm, I'm taking $1,200, which is the annual rent you'll, you'll collect or the annual cash flow, 
and divided by the total down payment and the cash outlay of twenty four thousand. So I got a four point eight percent number. Yeah, and he's gonna, but he may spend a lot more on deferred maintenance. Absolutely. You know what I mean, there's there's a lot. That, I mean, Absolutely. I mean, he also mentioned appliances. You know, so there's there's yeah. money there too. I mean, uh, yeah, I have, I don't know, man. What do you four, think? Four point eight percent, man. No, no, I, I know that's not, not good. You guys are California, right? No, no. we're we're in, we're in Midwest, buddy, buddy. So we're okay. we're right there with you. <laughs> okay, got. You. Um, well, the thing is, um, the thing is, I don't know. Here, like I said, there's two economies. There's the Spanish speakers economy, which I speak a, a fluently, or sure. in the English speaker economy. And so there's two different. I guess you could say we're near Mexico. Two different economies in terms of what you're going to pay for certain things based on, on my experience here. And, and, it, and the margin is quite, quite wide. Um, I, you know, usually for, for a three, two, I can, I can furnish it, but with 5,000, but in this case, I already have quite a bit of the furniture because I, I unloaded some of those rental arbitrage pr um, properties. So I won't have to buy as much, but, but the appliances, if I get them on Craigslist, some, you know, that are, that are Ivo, good. here's what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you the numbers, Sam and I are yeah. telling you the numbers. And we're seeing a sinking Titanic. And you're saying, but wait, two thirds of the ship has not sunk yet. You know, that, that's what we're seeing. And I get right. it, Ivo, there's, diff there's different cultures. There's different. You know what I love about numbers? It doesn't numbers lie. doesn't lie. They don't yeah. care whether you're black, white, pink, gray, gay, straight, does not matter. Right. Money is green. It, whether you're yellow, black, white, it doesn't matter. Money is green and numbers do not lie. So again, you know, I mean, if you want, if you want further help, uh, if you want further analysis, I mean, you could always email me. I'd be more than happy to help you off the air, right? Mm -hmm. Aside from the show, uh, to, and I've got some ideas. I've got some ideas on how you could, you know, it beef up your income a little bit. You know, I, I, we do, right? There's a lot of things yeah. that we can do, and we want to help you. Right? We're yeah. not here to just to berate you or just to, you know, have fun at your expense. Uh, but you know, we so we do want to help you, right? But based on what you're telling me right now, you're 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 having to make all these corners, you're cutting corners to make this work. You know, you're saying, well, but I can get the appliances at Craigslist for five bucks. I can do this at five bucks. I, I understand that. But a lot, a lot of times the numbers are the numbers. And I always tell people, look, if, if you have to go through that extent to make your margins work, your margins are not wide enough, you know? And I get it right now. It's a time where it's difficult, right? I mean, everybody's wanting to buy real estate. It's tough, but yeah, I don't, I don't know, Ivo. Based on what we've seen right now, what we're seeing right now, I personally would not do the deal. You sound like a guy who's willing to make it work no matter what, and I like you. So, I mean, you know, and you're already yeah. knee deep into this deal, so I'm sure you'll find ways to make it work and make money. But based on what we're seeing right now, I don't know, Ivo. I'm, I'm, I'm a little. Yeah, it, it almost seems like you're, you're looking for reasons, looking for reasons to make this work. But at the same time, you know, you have, you have to look at reasons why this shouldn't work and wouldn't work, and what are the possibilities of this blowing up and imploding. Yeah. Again, so if there's anything you could take away from this, Ivo, I'd say you protect your downside. Your upside will always take care of itself. O always look at the downside first, and then you look at the cash flow. In my opinion, right? I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, given even, um, I guess, you know, there's a lot of things and maybe I could learn, you know, some more. And that's what I need to do because I know I've been, I've been bidding on houses for <laughs> several years. And even when I bid way above, everything is selling way above asking price. But even when I, when I bid way above, I still don't get them. But obviously I'm, you know, I'm going through an MLS, a real seasoned investor, you know, like you're. Wait, I thought this was off market. This was off market. Yeah. So that's why, you know, I, you know, with this, with this real, he's a broker, a realtor that owns his own brokerage. Wait, so I'm, I'm confused. You, you, so you're working with the realtor broker, but this is off market. What's happening here? This is off market because it's one of his clients. He has, um, he has a management prop, uh, company as well that manages right. uh, rentals. So is he, and, so is your realtor friend, is he only bringing this deal to you or is he bringing it to a bunch of other people? He probably, he, he probably, I'm going to guess he probably brought it to a lot of people. I don't know. I really don't know that. Yeah. It could be that he only brought it to me because he's, I've given him I, I guarantee classes. you, unless he's your best friend that you've had since kindergarten and he tells you on paper that you both sign, I guarantee you he probably brought it to many, many other people. Mm -hmm. Like I said, at the end of the day, he's there to make money. He's not there to help you. I don't care what he says. You know, for sure. But but the bottom line, if push came to shove, yeah. if it was between his bank account and your bank account, <laughs> you better believe he's choosing his bank account first. And th again, I, that's just the way the world works. Yeah. You know, somebody tells me, oh, but Daniel, he's my friend. I was like, well, that's just wonderful. You know yeah. what I mean? So again, Ivo, in my opinion, uh, I would start looking at off-market deals again. There's a lot of things we can help you. But for now, I, I don't know. Sam, what are your last thoughts? 
Yeah. Um, you know, again, re- feel free to reach us out, uh, reach out to us. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll give you some, some comments um, off the air. But uh, with that being said, we're, we are running a little bit out of time, Ivo. Um, that, this is just our analysis. We want to wish you luck. Um, you know, we don't want we don't want anybody losing money. That's that's not that's not what we're here. Uh, we're here to help people make money. So, uh, but w- with that being said, any final parting words for us or any, anything you'd like to add? No, I guess I, the email and I, yes. yeah, I would like to. Uh, yep. Offline. All right, absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Ivo. All right, Ivo, we'll, we'll see you soon. All right, thank you. Hey guys, it's Daniel, one half of the Quack Brothers. And welcome back to the, the recap. And uh, so we had Ivo yeah. on. Um, Man, I must say he he was counting out. He, he was he was hoping for a lot of things. And I don't know if that worked. Well, that was his, that's the, that's the downside, Sam. His yeah. his plan was hope, yeah. and hope is not a plan. And that's a, that's a lot of newbie mistakes I see is that they see a deal, and I've done this before when I was a complete new. But uh, I, I see a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, if this just worked out, it'll work. Well, like you know, it's like they're almost selling selling themselves. You shouldn't they're have kinda, to sell the deal. The deal should have to sell. Yeah. You. The, so they're they're you know, it's kind of like. You know, it's, it's kind of like it's telling yourself, "Oh, it's gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work." But really, the numbers tell you, "No, it's not." It's well, you just, don't you don't ever you know do that. I mean? If anything, you find more reasons to, for it to not work right. as opposed to whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, my recap. Uh, good guy. You know, he was a nice dude. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's a lot of work that I see that needs to be done with Ivo. I think he's got the basics, right? So imagine like a martial artist who knows his fundamentals, but he needs to learn to be a little bit more you know, more protective of his downside. You yeah. know, it's kind of like a fighter who's, who's great, who's talented, but never plays defense yeah. and eventually and that's, gets that's unfortunate out. thing with, and it sounds like he has some money. It sounds like he was successful in other things, but that's the problem is when you have money, you're like, oh, I, I got money. I'll, I'll you know, I, I don't care if I lose yeah, it. that's the worst That's, that's the have. problem. And, yeah. and you know, if you're going to get into something, get into something that's going to be profitable and, and ex- expect to make money. You know, you, you can't go in this thing expecting to make 4.8% cash on cash return. Well, here's you're, the, here's you're better the, off yeah, investing well, in a mutual fund. My problem is that he didn't even know that that, that was the cash on cash return. Right. Point eight. We had to point it out to him. Right. And that's the point I mean. It's about the people. It's never about yeah. the properties. So, all right. Well, thanks guys for watching yep. this episode of The Closing Table. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of The Closing Table. Now, if you're interested in being a contestant on the show, go ahead and click on that link in the description. All you have to do is fill out your information, submit it, and we'll reach out to you to see if you're a good fit for our show. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.